In this video I'd like to explain some quantum physics on the future of farming. I'll just be a little short video. Just explain um, some ideas of uh, instead of using um, say like pesticides and things like that some of the newer ideas uh, technologies behind some of this. <coughs> now one of the best ways to explain this is to start with the idea of controlling especially molds and funguses say in f um, f uh, pes pesticides or pests like bugs um, in say uh, especially orchards uh, and, and vegetable farming. It's harder to do what I'm going to explain in uh, you know big field crop you know farming. I grew up my father was a large uh, cattle farmer, <coughs> large um, <coughs> um, cash crop to so understand farming. <coughs> now I want to explain um, you can control all this with with the uh, energy and frequencies of energy. It's based on this here is a is a Rife uh, frequency generator on Dr. Royal's Rife technology. Now it runs off a computer, a program. What this does is for bioresonance healing, uh, for killing pathogens in your in your body, just like say cordial silver, garlic, uh, etc. But this does it with energies because everything has its own energy frequency. Dr. Royal Rife invented a thing called the spectrometer, bioresonance healing, uh, many uh, microscopes, all kinds of other stuff. He's a lot more brilliant than than Tesla because of you know what he really invented. What do you do, you know? proved everything here is energy everything is actually light energy everything is actually holographic so everything has been built uh, in here by design so what happens is some of the chemicals we're creating is something that totally goes against uh, the design and how everything works uh, with our DNA we're discovering uh, you know how our DNA is um, uh, uh, it's, it's how much of like a, a computer and how it controls our whole experience. Anyways, that's for other videos. How you control it is, say every mold or fungus uh, would have uh, its own frequency. So what you do is you build a gigantic generator and probably have it robotic because I'm not saying it, it depends on the frequencies. Uh, it could have quite an effect, say, on, a, say, if a person was actually driving a vehicle around. Um, a, a lot of the frequencies that wouldn't harm you, but some term, long term exposure to certain frequencies, uh, um, certain ones could. Uh, so the idea would probably have robotics easy enough, anyways. You could just put a, a, a you know, a little line or a string or something around the field it just follows it around anyway so all you need to do is really run around with the frequency just drive really really slow so that it can concentrate on the trees uh, in an orchard say or uh, vegetable so it kind of can as it would go slowly through so it can concentrate for a matter of of, uh, of uh, uh, just minutes you know uh, so all you need is probably sometimes would probably I would say an exposure. You have to test this to know what exposure. But if just say for oh three to ten minutes maybe, uh, as it would go through, uh, say every day, and that would control a lot of molds and funguses from ever um, uh, propagating. Not to say the whole idea really isn't to kill all the molds and funguses, but the whole idea would be to kill uh, or keep them down so they never really um, propagate, like, you know, expand and grow. So, but then if you have a certain frequency, it only, the frequency is only for that mold or that fungus. So, the same thing would be for, say, a bug. Um, I'm just saying, uh, in farming, I know one time you got little black beetles. If you're growing canola, if they get growing and you don't get spray on it, they'll eat your canola off in, in two weeks. So if you're growing canola, you got to use a spray. 
Now you could also use the same method. Uh, I think I don't know at this point um, it, whether it would really be maybe way too costly at this point. But if you took energy and uh, say you could create energy so that the bug would think that it's a different crop, so it wouldn't want to eat it because it didn't know that it's there. Uh, the other thing is probably that every bug has a lot of specific um, structures, uh, say in their skin, uh, in in their internal organs, whatever. And you could use a frequency actually probably to disrupt uh, a certain aspect of of, of that bug, uh, say to. I'll stop it from reproducing, uh, change hormones, all kinds of different things with by using a frequency. So you could use, disrupt hormones or the, uh, a certain you know certain time of year, it's a certain frequency would uh, uh, confuse confuse them from mating, so that way they're not laying any eggs. So there's lots of different ways to do this. But it takes a lot of research, and uh, I'm just uh, explaining this idea. So. Uh, and and you know there's money in it because hey, you could prat patent uh, uh, be very money making so you know so that you could uh, patent you could probably patent a frequency but especially delivery or the process so that um, you know it so that it's actually very profitable but now it's healthy for us you can still make money. Uh, because hey, we need to have business. We need to have things, but you know we can use uh, frequencies um, to uh, control, uh, especially to start with molds and funguses. That's a no-brainer. You could you could actually probably have you know you could put one of these in every tree, but that's really not necessary. All you, you need to do you don't because if you use a frequency all the time, sometimes it it it's not really effective uh, from what I've learned from um, uh, research on these type of machines that when you're using it on a person even for cancer you don't use it 24 7 you maybe use it for I don't know let's say 20 minutes half an hour to an hour or something like that but you, you know you need to use a ray tube so the whole idea is sometimes you could just use carrier frequencies uh, like this unit is a carrier frequency but if you have a ray tube, then it it goes through um, like a light energy, the frequencies through light. So um, you have to experiment to see which ones work the best. Um, but uh, I know for many years people have been using these type of machines, and it works very good on molds, funguses, passage. And say if you have some intestinal worms, you just turn that on, boom, psh, it's done. You know. So um, so everything. To explain more about quantum physics, um, everything has been uh, everything in creation is, is is created by a design within certain parameters within certain universes, certain galaxies, certain solar systems. Everything has its own certain parameters to it, and um, so you know, just a little short little thing. Um, you know, I had cancer before. And it was actually caused from suntan lotion. That's what causes more cancers probably than anything. Uh, be careful, maybe skin creams, certain ones, I don't know, because then when you get a lot of sun exposure. So uh, what, that's what happened to me. That's why I got it. I got it here, started growing, melanoma, got about this big, meditated years ago. Now I, I'm a awakened uh, Arcturian. I'm here to make many videos to help explain many different concepts help you expand uh, the way we do everything um, so you know I meditated on it and I asked uh, at the time I got to the point where all the new age meditation all the things nothing really working how can I change all this so I just asked uh, I said well at that time I you know I had the idea of, of God and angels and stuff like that now I'm, I'm way far beyond all of that but anyways uh, I asked that and, and and God angels all of creation I said you know I know that I can heal this and I you know so I'm asking how it can be done so whatever crazy answer I get uh, 
I'll go with it and I'll believe it because 100% I'm asking you and I know I believe the answer that I get will be true. So I got a crazy answer. The answer was tape a fish on it. I said, say what? He said, tape a fish on it. I said, oh, what the crap. Why would, I would never think of something like that. It has to be true. So I said, well, I believe it. I'm going to tape a fish on it. I'll walk around for two months with a stink rotten fish tape there uh, because I know it's going to cure me. So I got up in the morning. I got thinking, hey, you know what? I'm just going to try cod liver oil instead. So I went, rub cod liver oil, and it fell off. So now I understand about uh, DNA, uh, frequencies, and all this stuff. I remember all this stuff, how all these higher technology, quantum physics. And uh, so, you know, it was designed, our systems are designed to heal themselves and not be sick. Most of my father, uh, to finish the thing with the the cancer, um, so the reason I got such a crazy answer uh, was so that I could tell the story, so that now, so that you could understand, you know, what I'm trying to say. I got to the point where my father, we'd buy a lot of dying sick cattle, most we ever bought, and probably was about 27,000 cattle in a year. The last couple of years that we had cattle, we never lost any of them. We would use things like um, uh, mustard plasters, and the most we ever had was five, uh, about 14 uh, big ones. Usually the, when they're going to market, when they really, they were the ones that usually uh, uh, get sick. So they, we would have them, most we ever had, hanging from beams. You hang them up, they'd be sitting there, they'd be down on the ground, their eyes would be rolling and cloudy, and they got minutes to live. So you lift them up with a tractor bucket up on a beam. As soon as you do that, maybe I would say half a gallon of phlegm runs out. And then you, that might cure them with antibiotics if you keep them up, but that doesn't say for sure that would happen. <clears throat> so then what you do is you put a mustard plaster on them, and then you know do that at night in the morning. You just let them go, cured. No more pneumonia. No need for antibiotics either. Um, we used to have costasiosis, and sometimes one time we had it really really bad. And we never told anybody, we just cured them. And uh, so we have, you know, one time we found, and I was watching, we were watching, but we had dozens and dozens of them. So at the time, it was in winter, a snowstorm was on, uh, you couldn't get to town, the roads were closed, and the uh, um, uh, uh, and the stores were closed because it was Sunday, no such thing as Sunday shopping back when I was a kid. So what we used to use was... Uh, uh, we put two liters, put a, what you do is just slide down the tongue, uh, uh, about a three quarter uh, black hose, stiff though, like a water hose, uh, or plastic water hose, with a funnel on the end, just tape it on the end, and you just slide it down, and you put in two liters of raw linseed oil. But what we also found was that uh, it, when we ran out of that, because we had so many, uh, we used raw uh, boiled linseed oil and that uh, we ran out of that because we didn't have much and then we used straight 30 motor oil and then we went to 10 W30 and uh, so that was so we used all that and uh, by the way oil is good for cattle they, they thrive they put up more weight um, now the other little trick that you do is about three to four weeks before market uh, if you put a uh, uh, raw linseed oil on the hay uh, about maybe once a week or a couple times a week and uh, before you send to the market uh, their coats will be super shiny and then what you do is you pressure wash them and when they go in you always get top dollar for them because they just look so and they're also more livelier you can just see that vibrance in, 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 the, in the animal plus also that's in the meat Okay, one last little thing about the farming uh, was when I was a little kid, go to a market and uh, with my grandmother, I just little guy, and uh, I mean little guy down here, and she'd be saying, oh, to other people, don't, don't eat that, don't buy that pork, look at that pork, it's all got white fat, that bacon and all oh, that pork, white fat, that's not healthy for you. The reason was because... And at that time, there's lots doing it, and less and less, and now hardly anybody does it today. At that time, they had fed primarily, uh, root-fed pork was primarily turnips, 
farm, the turnips feed into the pigs. The pigs do, uh, thrive on it, but the biggest thing is the pig are really healthy. The pig is really healthy, so all that healthiness of the vegetables are in in the in the pig. So it's really healthy. You have a little the fat will be yellow, and it has a little well, you get a little turnip taste to a little touch once you're used to it. Uh, but so the whole idea is really having root fed pork. So you know, say uh, you feed it. Uh, a month before you'd send it to market, you would send it um, to to eat uh, uh, pork and and uh, I mean potatoes, carrots, uh, turnips, whatever. And people pay more money because it's healthy. It is not near as acidic meat, and uh, so it's really you know good you know good for you. So anyway, that's just some of the farming. I have lots of other stuff, all kinds of other. Uh, Old, old secrets like that.